Hey everyone, hi there, it's Dr. Jen. Happy post-memorial day, the unofficial start to summer. Um, thanks for uh, joining me today on What's Up Wednesday. And I figured today, um, sort of in between patients, it's pretty crazy, the month of May and June in my office because it's what we call camp season. Everyone's coming for their camp checkups and they need so many forms. So we try to do their camp forms and their school forms, whether it's day camp or sleepaway camp, make sure their vaccines and everything is up to date. So it's kind of busy but I just wanted to jump on and talk a little bit about um, summer fun and some summer safety tips um, because accidents we know occur in children when we least expect it. Um, and so I thought maybe I'd talk a little bit about some sun safety, swim safety, um, exercise, hydration, all those things that we do um, and have fun with our kids in the summer. So to start with, uh, I guess I'll start with maybe swim safety. And as we, as you parents know, that it's really important to um, make sure that your child is being well watched, um, well and supervised while they're at a pool or at the beach. And you can't rely just on the lifeguards, especially if you have young kids who may not know how to swim. You need to be in like hands reach distance of them. Um, but any kids, you really have to be watching them. There has to be a designated person. So um, listening to music, talking on your phone, um, scrolling through your texts is not really watching your kids when they're in the pool or they're swimming. You have to really be watching them closely um, because drowning can happen really, really quickly in a small amount of water. Um, I also think it's really important. Um, kids sometimes wear those floaties on their arms and we say to them, oh great, look, you're swimming, you're swimming. Those are not real flotation devices and kids have to know that doesn't really mean that they're swimming. So you have to make sure that again, that you're watching them even if they're wearing floaties in the pool. Um, and if you do have a pool in your home, you know, everyone always thinks it's rare, but unfortunately I hear um, in my own practice, obviously now we hear on the news because it's 24 seven, unfortunate accidents that occur um, with the swimming pool. So you wanna make sure obviously that you do have a, have a fence at least four feet high around all the perimeter, all four sides um, is the safest way. Um, and you want to make sure that you have um, it, the lock closes, it opens from the outside, and that it's high up that the child can't reach it, and then it just closes automatically so a child can't get in. Um, and you also want to make sure that um, if your pool opens up from your house outside, like a big sliding window or a glass door, um, that there's an alarm. It's a great way to just in case um, a child wanders outside. Um, sometimes there's like an opening for our pets to go through. Kids can go through that as well too and get outside. So you really want to be careful, vigilant every day, check to make sure that the um, pool um, fence is closed and it's locked. You also always want to make sure that at your pool that there is in case you need to um, if there is someone drowning that there's like you have a pole or there's a, a way to help um, get them out of the water safely um, and I think if you're ever at without a lifeguard or if there's there's no assistance always you remember to call 911 it's best if there's someone that knows CPR but always whatever in doubt call um, 911 that's the most important thing and to if your child has has um, not breathing is to start CPR right away so that's really really important um, what else can I tell you about swimming? Oh yes, so people always ask me you know, about swimming lessons and swimming lessons are so important for kids. We know that um, children that have swimming lessons, it's 88% less likely for drowning if kids have swimming lessons. So I do think that all kids should have swimming lessons or at least learn how to swim, whether it's from a parent or from a swim program. Um, I do not believe in, and there is no scientific evidence showing that kids under the age of one, those like throwing them under the water, um, it's making them safer for them to swim. I do think you should introduce your children to the water um, at a young age. It's fine to bring your one-year-old into the pool, but you need to be holding them um, closely and let them be comfortable in the water. The more they're comfortable around the water, the better. But swimming lessons as they get older is really important, I think, for all children. Um, what else to tell you? Again, if you ever have a child and there is water um, in your neighborhood or in your backyard, always check the pool, even if you think that they would never go back there. Um, I think that's just really important. And as I said, to make sure that you have locks and that they're kept locked and that you check them daily. If there is an alarm, that you check the batteries um, frequently to make sure that it works. Um, as well too. And then if you're at the beach, I think it's important, as I said, you can't always rely just on the lifeguards. You have to have a designated person watching as well too. Um, if there is a, a rip current um, 
for older kids and they're in the water, they need to learn right away that they swim alongside with it um, and then come in closer to shore um, when they are able to, but not try to fight against the current, they get too tired and then they're more likely for drowning to occur um, because of that as well too. And what else? Well, let's talk a little bit about so a beach or a pool and, and um, sun safety as well, because I always get asked so much about sunscreen as well too for kids. So for little infants under the age of six months, um, particularly the American Academy of Pediatrics doesn't recommend sunscreen. Um, we really want to keep kids out of the sun. They're small, they can get dehydrated, they can get burnt, their skin is very fragile. So you want to really protect their skin. So yes, they should wear a hat with a brim. Um, I think I posted a picture on Facebook today of a cute little baby with a nice hat with a brim on. Sunglasses is a great idea too. And just, a, you know, a cotton outfit if they're going to be out and about with their, as much as possible, their arms and legs covered or even a little throw blanket over them if, if um, their arms or legs are exposed. Um, if you're really away or you're in an area that you need to use sunscreen, then do a test patch on it first to make sure that it is okay. But we do recommend though for kids six months and above that they wear sunscreen. Um, the American Academy need, excuse me, the American Academy of Pediatrics says an SPF of 15 or above. I actually say 30. I think that really gets um, really protection from most of the UVA, UVB spectrum rays, which is really important. Um, I know people go higher than that, and that's fine, but if you have a 50 or a 60, I don't want you to have this false sense of security that you put so much protection on them and that you don't need to worry, because it really is important. Probably the most important thing I can tell you um, on today's What's Up Wednesday, we're talking about sun safety, is reapply, reapply, and reapply again. You can't reapply too much sunscreen, so you want to do it at least every two hours. That's really, really important. And um, you also want to always reapply when they come out of the water. Um, I don't care if they're in for a few minutes or if you, the bottle says it's waterproof. Nothing's really waterproof for that long. So um, if you want to make sure your child doesn't get burned, then you want to make sure that you put the sunscreen on again when they come out. And how much to use? So the issue is also parents tell me, well, I use sunscreen and they got burned. Well, it's usually because they didn't use enough sunscreen. So usually an ounce or a shot glass is the amount that you need. So if you think about that, right, an ounce. So you're putting that all over your child. You're repeating it every two to three hours. You have two kids and there's two parents. Like you should be going through a bottle like in a weekend. And some people say, well, like I have like the same bottle all weekend. I mean, all, all, all month long for the summer. So obviously then you're not using it enough. So you need to use it frequently and a big enough quantity um, to make sure that you get the sun protection from the UVA and the UVB um, broad spectrum range. Now, which sunscreen should you use? And that's always like a big debate. Um, there's chemical sunscreens and there's barrier sunscreens. Um, I still prefer the barrier sunscreens. That's the um, zinc oxide, the titanium dioxide. Um, those are barriers that so they sort of sit on top of your skin and they prevent um, you from getting burned as opposed to some of the chemical sunscreens that get absorbed into your skin. Um, but I have to say, like, whichever you can get your child to, you, to wear is the one that they should be wearing because, you know, it's always looking at the, the pros and the cons and really what you're trying to do is protect them from skin cancer melanoma, which is actually on, still on the increase in teenagers. So you want to um, make sure that it's one that they will wear. Um, so if it's one that they like the smell better, then that's fine too. Just make sure that you keep reapplying. Um, if they have sensitive skin, again, I definitely think um, ones that have our barrier like titanium or zinc oxide um, are a better bet for young kids who have sensitive skin. Um, and also, um, it is, I forgot what I was gonna say. Um, it is, as I said, just important to reapply. For kids, you don't wanna put it um, on the back of their hands because they rub, um, or too near their eyes because they can rub their eyes and then it burns and it hurts. So you have to be careful um, with that when you're putting on sunscreen too, not to put it on the back of their hands um, because they can rub it or put it in their mouth and, and then they'll get uncomfortable and not wanna wear it. If you are using um, a chemical sunscreen, you want to actually put it on before you go outside because it takes about 30 minutes or 15, 30 minutes or so to really start working. Um, and it's actually easier. I actually did this when my kids were really little, but you sort of like slather them up in sunscreen prior to putting their bathing suit and their t-shirts or their sun protective shirts on. This way you really know you've got them covered because once they're outside, right, they wanna whoosh, they're running all over the place, they wanna go play. And so it's hard to get the sunscreen then everywhere. So put it on before you leave your home. 
um, I think that's the best bet um, and it's the easiest way to get them really covered from head to toe with the sunscreen um, but as I said bring it with you and reapply and then just a word of caution about aerosol so that used to be like the new thing like because it sprays on easily but what we've been seeing a couple of reasons that I don't really um, recommend it to parents is that um, it's very uneven it seems um, not to really be on as thick of a layer um, and it doesn't seem to be then working as well but it seems to be these spots that aren't covered that you thought may have been covered and also the aerosolized can get into their lungs and, the, and they can breathe it in and it can be uncomfortable cause coughing and irritation as well too so I prefer the lotions or the sticks or the creams better for um, sunscreen for kids and let's see so as I said, protection is always good. So you can do the SPF. There's shirts and shorts and bathing suits now. Um, obviously, um, sun is strong between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. So trying to stay more in the shade in those hours, having an umbrella out at the beach is always a great way too to get some sun protection. But if your child is feeling headachey or lightheaded or nausea or anything, first of all, you should always bring them into the shade or air conditioning, make sure they have enough fluids. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute too. Um, but you really um, want to protect them from the heat, especially when it's very humid and uh, hot out as well, too. And just remember, your kids can also get a lot of sun um, even when it's cloudy out. People always think, right, oh, there's no sun out today, but that's when I often get calls at, in the evening that their child has a sunburn um, because it was cloudy out and they didn't really think that they needed to have sunscreen. So just get into that habit of using sunscreen every day. If you're um, a parent like myself, um, it's great to just use um, a moisturizer that actually has sunscreen in it so you have that extra layer of protection um, every day. And that's what I do. I have regular, today I'm wearing a tinted moisturizer so I probably look tanner than usual. Um, but that's okay too. So whatever works um, best for you, but the key is to do it uh, daily and consistently. Um, I think those are all the things I wanted to tell you. We talked about reapplying, uh, especially after swimming or sweating or perspiration, um, and that's the best bet to doing it from head to toe. Um, so talking about a little bit about heat and um, heat stress from kids. So we want kids to be playing outside, right, and exercising. We love the great weather so they can be running around, going to the playground, um, playing sports, soccer, you name it, whatever it is outside. Um, and so I think it's important that if kids are feeling thirsty, that means that they do need more fluid. So before they even go out, make sure that they're well hydrated, um, drinking lots of water. Everyone who knows Dr. Jen knows me, that I'm very big on getting kids to start drinking water from an early age. So when it, they get older and they're playing sports, they will um, sort of gravitate towards drinking water. So we want to make sure that they're drinking water prior, like a good, good you know, 8 to 12 ounces before they go out. And then um, if they're playing, um, maybe every 20 minutes or so, they will break to have um, a water break to get some water. Um, probably, honestly, if they're, for most kids, all they really need is water. If they're exercising, running around for an hour or so to hydrate, then afterwards another glass of water um, or a sports drinks and um, at all with all those um, extra electrolytes in it. Because besides all the extra electrolytes, what's in there is a lot of extra sugar oftentimes caffeine as well, but all the extra sugar, they don't need it. So if you're at a game, you know, and you um, want to bring something, so lots of water, but maybe like oranges or fruits, strawberry, um, watermelon is a high content of water too. So they get that, but they're getting some fiber as well too. So it's better to do that than to just give them all these fruit punches and drinks um, and all this extra added sugar sort of taking away from all the exercise that they're doing anyway. So I'm big on drinking water. So um, the key is prehydration to hydrate while they're um, playing the game when there's breaks and then to hydrate again afterwards so that's really important um, other just sort of heat tips as well too for kids especially for for babies right so we take them out we um, put them in the back of the car and they're they're facing backwards because that's the safest way right in their in their car seat to be facing um, often with the little babies um, you can have heat stroke very quickly um, if you leave them in the car and I'm saying unintentionally because it does occur but it's usually unintentional so leaving something like your pocketbook um, or your sunglasses your phone because you shouldn't really be talking on the phone or texting while you're in the car um, if you leave that in the back seat then you'll remember um, that the baby is back there and to take the baby um, out of the car as well too even if you think you're just running into the store just for a second and you crack the window the cars heat up really really quickly 
Um, and unfortunately, we always hear of all these unintentional cases of either heat stroke or even death um, in babies because they were in a, a car that got um, overheated r rather quickly. So please, um, again, anything that you can think of just to put in the back seat to remind you that the baby is back there can be extremely, extremely helpful. Um, what else? Let's see if I left anything else out. Um, as I said, if kids are feeling thirsty, that definitely means that they need more. And people always ask me, how much water? And there isn't one amount. It depends on the humidity that day, how hot it is, what activities they're doing, how long they're playing. Um, but they should be drinking so that they're urinating every few hours or so. Um, and that it should be on the yellow to clear side. If it's very, very dark, that means it's concentrated. Um, so they probably need some more fluids. But there's not really one specific amount. I don't want people to ever get with when I talk about foods or anything, get stuck on the exact amount. But drinking regularly um, and having a water bottle with you that's refillable is also a great idea to get kids in the habit of right away. So those are the things. Oh, talking a little bit more about sun. So I know I talk a lot about young kids because um, always parents are always thinking about their little infants and toddlers and safety but tanning beds. So it's Memorial Day weekend and junior prom, senior prom is, and graduation is right around the corner for many people. Tanning, pens, tanning beds are extremely dangerous. The um, ultraviolet light is just the same as getting it from the sun and can cause skin cancer. Obviously no one under 18 should even be admitted, but it does occur. So they really should be banned and no one should really should be using um, a, a tanning salon, in my personal opinion. And um, there are tanners and bronzers that people or kids can use if they want to um, before a big night out or their prom or they, they, they want to do that. That is definitely way safer. But I think something to remember with that is that just because you have this tanner or bronzer look on you doesn't mean that you have sun protection. So then if you go out, you still need to have sunscreen and you still need to protect yourself. As I said, melanoma is um, and, and skin cancer is on the rise still with um, young adults so it's important um, it's important obviously to go to your yearly uh, checkups um, if there's a family history or you have any moles or any concerns then to also see a dermatologist as well if that's needed or if your pediatrician thinks that's advisable too or they have questions they may refer you to a pediatric dermatologist or um, an adult dermatologist depending on your age as well too but it's really important um, to be screened yearly um, because earlier detection obviously is key. So that's um, a bit about tanning beds. And then just quickly um, before I go, a couple other topics that always come up this time of year is um, swimmer's ear. So kids get ear infections and I've spoken about ear infections. Swimmer's ear is an infection of the outer port portion or the canal, the ear canal. And it's usually if there's water that's been like sort of stuck in there, um, and then the, the ear, the outer ear can get inflamed. And this is on the outer portion, not behind the tympanic membrane. Um, an outer ear or a swimmer's ear infection can be extremely painful, extremely painful. And sometimes there's really no way of knowing except for seeing the doctor. So I don't particularly like to diagnose things over the phone because I need to see the ear to see what it looks like. Um, it could actually be both. You can have an ear infection um, and also a swimmer's ear, which is called an otitis externa at the same time. Um, often a regular ear infection, there's a cold or, or a URI that precedes it, but not necessarily. And for um, a swimmer's ear, it could be from a pool, it could be from bathing if they're going onto the water a lot, or it could be from a lake as well, but it's different treatments. So a treatment for an otitis externa or swimmer's ear would be ear drops that are antibiotic drops, but also can help pain and inflammation as well. Whereas oftentimes with an um, ear infection, um, you would need an oral antibiotic if it wasn't getting better on its own or your doctor thought that was necessary depending on the circumstances. So it's always important if your child's having an ear pain that's not going away with a, with a pain medication like Tylenol or ibuprofen that they are seen um, because a swimmer's ear can be very painful. So what can you do to prevent it? So it's important to keep the outer ear um, dry so you can buy these like swimmer ear drops that help to dry the ear after they've been um, in the pool or they've been swimming um, or you can actually make it yourself it's just it's like rubbing alcohol and vinegar one one part to one part and just a couple of drops that helps to dry the ear you never want to stick q-tips or anything in your ear right you heard that from a long time ago never anything smaller than your elbow should go in your ear 
kind of difficult to get your elbow. I don't know, some people who are very flexible, um, maybe, but I can't do that. Um, and you don't really want to be scraping at it because actually the people get all freaked out about the wax in your ear, but wax um, is actually protective in the ear. And then unless it's really clogged or you're having problems hearing or it's pain, just leave it alone and it actually can be um, sort of protective as well too. Um, but again, if you're having your child's having severe ear pain, always have it checked out because there's never a way of really knowing over the phone um, what kind of ear infection is and or what the treatment may need to be. Um, and I think that was really it. I really want your kids to be out and about, enjoy um, summertime, the, the pool, the beach, exercising. Again, you know, be a really good role model if you're out and about. Actually, one thing I left out was about life preservers and life jackets, and that used to be a big thing in my house too. But kids, whenever they're in um, a boat, they should be wearing life preservers, not just have them on the uh, ground of the boat, um, but they should be wearing them. And often, as a parent, if you're wearing it, then they'll wear it too. But if you're not wearing it and say they just need to, it's going to be a little bit harder to convince them. So again, be a great model for your kids. Um, I think that's probably the most important way for them to learn um, the importance and the safety measures that um, we want to keep them healthy. So this is Dr. Jen, uh, all about sun safety fun, um, lots of exercise and drinking lots of fluids. Um, if you want to know more, um, you can see me on my website, drjen.com. Check out Pediatrician in Your Pocket. Everything you need to know about caring for your baby from newborn through toddlerhood. Everything that we talked about today, even more in depth um, about summer safety and CPR and um, what to feed your baby and give them to drink and keeping them healthy and their developmental milestones. You name it, it's all in um, Pediatrician in Your Pocket, a comprehensive video guide. So you can check out my website to get more information about that too. And I hope you guys have a great summer, but I'll be back next week. Um, anyone has some topics they want me to talk about, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to answer your questions. Um, and um, we'll just move on from there. So have a great day, and I'm going to go see my next patient. Bye.